This year, Consumer Reports is hosting our annual meeting at our Connecticut test track. We'll have demonstrations of our testing, and we'll film a talking cars about autonomous technology in front of a live audience. Want to join us? Send a short email to talkingcars at consumer.org and tell us why you'd like to come and what question you'd want to ask the Talking Cars panel. We'll select a limited number of people who can attend the meeting in late October. Of course, while we'd love to pay your way, we're a nonprofit, so you'll have to cover the costs of your travel. Hope to see you there. On this episode, we talk about the all-new Honda Accord. We give you the inside scoop on some hot October new car deals, and we tell you how not to be taken advantage of at the dealership. Next on Talking Cars. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show. I'm Mike Monticello. I'm Ryan Pizlikowski. And I'm Jake Fisher. And today we're going to start off the episode talking about the 2018 Honda Accord. Uh, the Accord has been a popular car for decades, one of those go-to mid-size family sedans. Yep. But this time around with this redesign, I mean, they made wholesale changes. We're talking all new styling, all new drivetrains. Mm-hmm. So some really big changes. So we rented an early one from Honda and uh, to get kind of an early impressions of the car. So... Um, you know, the first thing you see in a car is its styling. So you're kind of a stylish young buck, Ryan. Why don't we start with you? <laughs> what do you think of uh, this? the way this new Honda Accord looks? Well, I think it's ugly. Whoa. Just come right out no, and say it. No, no. I, I, I don't hate it, but I don't like it. I don't care for the um, the, the, the nose is big and chunky. And it's kind of snub nose. Yeah, and it's got that, you know, that fastback kind of a A7 thing going on. Yeah. But, and I like it on the A7, but it just—it seems like they put two cars together in this thing. I, <laughs> so it doesn't seem like I, continuity just, is yeah, lacking. Yeah, exactly. I, for me, it's just. Yeah, I, I find that that like chrome bar across the front is kind of uh, a little a little. See, out I can there. look at it from one angle, and I'm like, eh, okay. And then yeah. I see another angle, and I'm like, what is that? It almost looks like the cross tour. Remember oh, don't say cross tour. You know what I mean? I said it. I don't now know. you're being offensive. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I actually kind of like the uh, the rear styling. I kind of like, you know, when you look at it, they clearly were trying to have it look like an Audi A7, which mm-hmm. actually is a hatchback. Uh, they were trying to make it look like a hatchback, I think. Uh, but this one has a real trunk. Uh, and it actually, the trunk is actually even a little bit bigger than before, according to Honda. Mm-hmm. Um, where are you with this styling, Jake? Well, I think when it comes to the styling, I think you're both wrong. I'm uh, shocked that he <laughs> doesn't agree with us. <laughs> and, and, and the issue is, is that, I mean, I don't know. We're Consumer Reports. I'm not sure if everyone's looking at Consumer Reports to think about what we think about the styling. Um, you know, and that really doesn't matter. I mean, the thing about the styling is not necessarily whether or not it looks good or it looks bad. It just looks different. And I think that's where they made a win here because there are so many midsize sedans that just they're cookie cutter. Right. right? I mean, they all look the same. They get different badges. And this does stand out of the pack a oh, little bit, which I think is a good thing. And if you could do that without screwing up That's something. That's the key. They didn't compromise there anything. As far as we can tell, so again, limited time in the car. Right. But unlike uh, you know the new Toyota Camry, which has gotten a little more low slung, is actually a little harder to get in and out of, a little less rear seat room. From what we've seen so far, there's very little, you know, bad side to what right. they've done with the styling, you know, other than that you don't like it. But, you know, there's people, <laughs> I'll get, I'll get over there's it. people that are going to like it, there's people that aren't going to no, like it. Like I said, it stands it turn, out. It turns heads. I mean, I it drove it, um, I drove it one afternoon and I, people are looking at you because they're, they, they see, they see it's a new Honda and it looks like an Accord. What is it? You know, yeah. and they're, it's, it's different. There's no right. doubt. Well, let's, let's get into the good stuff. Let's talk mm-hmm. about drivetrains, you know, uh, Turbos for everybody. You get a turbo, you get a turbo. <laughs> I'm channeling my inner Oprah. Nice. Um, so what they've gone, to, they've gone to smaller engines with turbochargers uh, with the point of putting the turbochargers on to try and get, you know, about the same power as what they had with their old engines. Uh, well, why couple, would they do this, Jake? There's a couple things going on. Um, one is the smallest place for turbos. They do have the potential of getting better fuel economy. And as we saw with the CRV that we tested with the 1.5 turbo, which is Pretty very similar to what we're seeing here in the uh, the mainstream engine in the Accord. I mean, it was very fuel efficient in the uh, the CRV. I expect we're going to see some really good numbers with the Accord too. But the other interesting part, and it comes down to that packaging, not screwing up stuff. Um, when you look at the Camry, they still get that big V6 in there. Right. By actually packaging this vehicle only for four cylinder engines. They could actually kind of maximize the interior volume of the car and keeping the outside smaller. 
Right. Now, do you think they did this largely for fuel economy reasons or more for packaging? I mean, what's... Well, I, I think the 1.5, I mean, what they've been able to accomplish with that 1.5 in terms of fuel economy, it makes sense. They've really taken in the next step. Right. Um, in terms of not having that V6, and they still make V6s, and we saw them in the, uh, the Odyssey, and it's silky mm-hmm. smooth, and it's got power. I think that becomes a packaging issue. Because really, there's not a lot of high volume in that the, the high performance engine, right? Right, right. But that's the one we that that we rented from Honda uh, was yeah. this the bigger <laughs> engine, the two liter two liter turbo, turbo four yeah. cylinder with uh, let's see, I've got it written down here, two hundred fifty two horsepower, um, well, made it to a ten speed automatic. And let's be specific. I mean, that's the one that Honda goes and says, "Here, try out our right, new Accord." Right. With yeah. all we, of love the we love it. We love the letter yeah, yeah, and the sport. Right. It's the hot, level. it was the top of the line <clears> touring <throat> version. Yeah. Right. But let's just as a drivetrain, you know, with this this bigger turbo engine. Uh, and the 10-speed automatic, uh, I mean, that's new to the Accord. What did you think of that, Ryan? I thought the um, the engine was quite powerful. Um, it's It was fun to drive. I mean, the, the transmission was, you know, a 10, 10, you tell me 10 gears, and I think, like, that's ridiculous. What, what, when when <laughs> am I getting into 10? That? Yeah, when, well, when is this going to end? Bike? I mean, come on. <laughs> I know. When's it going to end, though? 10 <laughs> gears? I mean, right. and I, I don't know if I ever got in 10th gear, but I'll tell you what, they did a good job. In, the, in wherever I was in the middle because I, you know, it, it was a decisive, good shifts. <clears throat> yeah. um, it, it just made it well with the engine. And uh, I mean, I think you you mentioned the other day, this is a, a Honda built transmission. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. And that's a big deal. And and so I got into the car and I was, <laughs> uh, you know, ready to be under impressed. And, <laughs> and I didn't even know the first time I got in, I had talked to, you know, Gabe about, you know, and he's like, oh, I don't want to tell you anything. Just go drive the car. And so I went out there and I started driving it and Initially, it's like chirping the tires off the line. And then as I'm driving, I'm thinking, well, this isn't a CVT. This is a real trans, you know, real automatic transmission with right. real shifts. That said, the shifts are nearly imperceptible. Right. I mean, it's it's a so far in a way seems like a really good transmission. Uh, do you miss the V6? Well, I mean, I, not, not, I just want to hold on to the transmissions for a little bit. And we all we've mm-hmm. all gone biking together. Right. You know, and it's like you go back. To our parents' age, they had three-speed bicycles, and right. they had three-speed automatic transmissions. And then there was 10-speeds, and we got 10-speed automatic transmissions now in cars. Mm. And now, I mean, the people I bike with, they're like, oh, I want to switch to that, you know, the 10-speed to the 11-speed. They're up to 12 speeds on mountain <laughs> bikes up now, up to 1 speed. by 12. And why do you do that? You get more efficiencies. You're able to have that really slow, you know, high-speed gear. You got the, the, the climbing gear. Um, and plus, in the middle, you've got that everything along the way so i mean it is yeah. functional as long as you can make it reliable right i think the key though is they it, it's it knows what gear to be in too you're, when you have that many gears right. it has to be right. intelligent to know what gear you should be in so it's not constantly you know changing its mind you know that's what you don't want yeah, you don't want right. it shifting that's if right. it's shifting all the time right. that's annoying so, this yeah. one was doing a pretty good and job i, I was, guess i, I guess impressed. with time they they iron those things out and, and, and we've seen better. that before like even when they you know when we first saw the first six speed automatics there was a little confusion of what gear to be in so right. it was impressive at least initial impressions driving this around it right. it seemed pretty decisive of what gear it wanted to be in yeah so let's talk about something else that is really big news for this honda accord which is advanced safety systems what they call Honda Sensing is their suite of advanced safety systems. And you know, we're talking forward collision warning, automatic right. emergency braking, <clears> lane <throat> keeping assist, yep. uh, adaptive cruise control, all standard for the Honda Accord, no matter what trim you get. That's a big deal. And not only that, but they're standard even on the manual transmission models, uh, which wasn't the case with the Honda Civic Si, which only comes as a manual. Mm-hmm. And the uh, even the, the regular Civic, uh, if you got the manual version, you couldn't get automatic emergency braking. That's all changed now. So, so fundamentally, first of all, you do get manual transmissions with the Accord. Yeah, that's with, in and of itself. Even with the two liter, and and that two liter it's turbo. I mean, that's that's kind of related to the the Civic Type R. Right. So, I mean, this is a powerful engine right. that you could still get. And when it comes to manual transmissions, I mean, I, I would say there's two manufacturers that really get manual transmissions right. It's Honda, and it's Mazda. Right. Yeah. And they make just transform the vehicles. I mean, just make it so much fun to drive. Um, and it's great to have them, and there's no excuses. Right. So we've seen, like you said, we've seen some manufacturers and Honda before said, "Oh well, you know, if you got a manual transmission, we can't figure out how to put FCW and AEB and all that stuff." And and they've got it. Right. Every and single version. Every doesn't matter which Accord you get, 
You get that. Yeah. We, addressed, huge. we addressed this question before. We had a question. We, <clears throat> we dealt right. with it on the yeah. air where the person said, you know, you can't, you know, they can't put uh, automatic emergency braking in a car with a manual transmission. And the reality is they can. And that's and what if we said. You don't, yeah. if you don't push in the clutch, right. it's just going to stall, which is still way better than crashing it's, into it's another stopping. car. Right. It's right. stopping yeah. at the end of the day. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, so that's big news, and that's really good for Honda. Um, let's talk about uh, something else on the, the interior of the car. I think seems like so far. I mean, that was a top end version, but nicer materials, a pretty nice design, I th- comfortable seats. I what did you think about the infotainment I'm gonna, system? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna interrupt you. I thought How I'm, dare gonna you, go, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go back. I, what I noticed when I drove that car, the, one of the big things I noticed is it's a, m- more substantial. Yeah, I felt like the the Honda Accord used to be well, any of the Hondas were a little tinny, maybe a little light feeling, which was <laughs> no bad thing. They were yeah. fun to drive, but this thing is like. It's grown up in a sense. I don't know if we want to say that, but it's it's feels substantial. It yeah. feel, felt a little and more European almost. I thought it was yeah. quieter too. And again, mm-hmm. we yeah, and I were talking about it. Hondas haven't been known for being uh, all that quiet usually, and this one, this one really was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's exactly right. And that that that's actually the most fundamental thing that you notice when you drive the car. It's yeah. not that kind of light and you know tinny. Yeah. You know, and I don't mean that in a bad way. Yeah, no, Hondas yeah, are right. not terrible. Yeah. But it's like. Again, Mazda and Honda, they tend to make kind of, you know, that reputation for like lighter vehicles, less right. sound deadening, mm-hmm. noisier. And it does, it's a little more Passat and a little bit less Mazda 6 at this point. You yeah. know, it's quieter and, and rides better, but mm-hmm. it still does feel very substantial and drives yeah. very nice. It does feel sporty. Yeah. yeah. Would you be okay if we talk about the infotainment system? We can now? go there now. Okay. Yeah. okay. I would like to actually <laughs> say one other thing. No, uh, no, seriously. So all new infotainment system in this, in the Honda Accord, it's yep. actually uh, very similar to the Honda Odyssey, the, the right. minivan. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, and on higher trim versions of the old Accord, it had this, you know, kind of odd, wonky dual screen setup, which was, we never really liked. No. And this one, <clears throat> where do we stand? Is it improvement? Or what, where do, well, where do we think? I think it's gone from, I think it's a love it or hate it kind of system. Mm-hmm. I think before it was kind of a hate it or hate it system. Um, it just <laughs> wasn't it, good. It's better than the last one. I it's will better say that. than the last, but yeah. it's like I don't know. What do you what do you what do you think? I, I mean, thought it's 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 certainly better than the two screens that weren't even like matched. They looked like they were from <laughs> right. two different manufacturers. Yeah. Different. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's, different there were, graphics. And exactly. Everything. It didn't make sense. <clears throat> yeah. um, this is one screen. It, it, it's pretty. Um, it's a little busy. There's a lot going on. Um, but I think with time you get used to used to it and. Uh, there's a learning curve for yeah, sure. Really, and, there's always, you know, there's always a learning curve. It has a lot of functionality. I think it, it, right, it looks very nice. Um, but I, I think some people are going to really like it yeah. because it gives you a lot of customization. I think a lot of people who just want to get in the car and go mm-hmm. and don't want to mess with it, they're not going to like it. No. So I think it's kind of, it's kind of your level of, you know, are you an Android person or are you, right. uh, you know, yeah, still yeah. have your iPhone 5? You know, <laughs> I mean, that's kind of where it is. Potentially so. distracting. Potentially, it could be very distracting because yeah. there's a lot of stuff you could do, a lot of customization, a lot of moving things around. Um, you know, I think there's a good argument that for, you know, it's nice to have very simple controls and I could do whatever I need to do and get to it quick. You know, right. again, kind of like the Apple iPhone, right. you know, thing. It's, it's but, a, you can't really customize the screen. It's just it's that way. Yeah. Uh, and then this is very much Android. It's like, oh, I could do all these things. They seem like they want to wow you with, you know. There's a lot tech. of wowing. Yeah. And it's not yeah. just with that. But it's also with the gauge cluster. Right. Where I could, you yeah. know, the tachometer the, goes away. And yeah, they've got something else digital and, on the left side and, and regular <clears throat> analog yeah. on the other side. Um, so, you know, um, we're going to buy our own 2018 Honda Accord as soon as they're available. They're going on sale in a few weeks. We're going to get a, a 1.5 liter with the CVT, the continu- continuously variable transmission, mm-hmm. um, because that's going to be the car that, that, that the drivetrain configuration most people the are going to buy. Of so uh, we're going to get one as soon as we can and put it through our paces, and then we'll you know see how it stacks up against its competitors. Um, and that kind of brings me to our next segment, which is um, when the 2018 start arriving at dealerships, there's a good chance you're going to be getting some really great deals on a 2017 Honda Accord. And, you know, we're getting into October and November, and this is typically right. a, a good time. Uh, come on in. Uh, this is typically a good time to, uh, to get a good deal. Do you want to talk about why that is, Jake, and what's going on with this time of year? Yeah, sure. Well, I mean, look, every, every year, the, the 2018s, the next model years come out, mm-hmm. and you know, generally they're coming out before the actual change of the year, right? It's around this time that they're hitting the showroom. And what's going on is those, you know, no matter what you're buying, they're trying to get rid of the old inventory. Because when you're sitting there and you get the, the shiny new 2018 Accords. It's hard to, to sell the other one. Yeah. 2017s, everyone wants to buy the shiny new one. And because those 
automakers don't really raise the price a whole lot. You know, if you've got a twenty-four thousand dollars eighteen Accord, a twenty-four thousand dollars seventeen Accord, what are people going to buy? Right. right. Yeah. So they take those seventeens and they drop the price. And there's some amazing deals to be had. And there's a couple of reasons why you actually might want to get that older vehicle. Um, and a lot has to do with reliability, not just getting that good deal. But we see over and over and over again when they introduce that redesigned model that's when you have the most amount of problems because they're kind of working out the de details, working out right. the bugs, whereas that outgoing model, that 17 Accord, right. it's been around for so long. It's they've ironed out. That's yeah. typically the most reliable. Yeah. The last year is typically you the most it, reliable you you're going to have. Now, right. our analyst, Mel, uh, did a little research for us, just actually just quick search to mm -hmm. see yep. you know, what some good deals were uh, <clears throat> going on out there. And he looked, um, you know, so they just a little while ago came out with a 2018 Toyota Camry. And so he looked around for some 2017 Toyota Camrys and uh, this is something that you're going to want to jump on pretty quick if you want a camera because they won't last forever. But he found um, some that were as much as $5,500 off their MSRP. You know, and that's a brand new 2017 Camry mm -hmm. LE. Wow. Uh, he found one that was $5,500. Another one was $5,300, you know, with uh, dealer discounts, factory cash, right, all right. that kind of stuff. Um, so you're talking like seventeen grand, eighteen. We're grand. talking, That's we're impressive. talking eighteen six for one, and right. uh, yeah, and if nineteen thousand for the other. And if you don't have to have the latest and greatest, I mean, that's that's a deal. That's yeah. ridiculous. And it's, it's probably going to last. Reliable car going <laughs> to yeah. last forever. forever. Yeah. And, and, and you know, and with these things, it's it's you know, it's not like we're we're not trying to send you out to the local deal here, but it's like you could go on the sites and there's local inventory that you could. Virtually all the automakers do this. You check out the inventory, and you could search those local inventory. You might have three Toyota dealerships around you or three Volkswagen dealers around you, and you could find and see if they have any of those 17s yep. left over. And the, they're going to wheel and deal on that yeah. car. And, uh, you know, BMW's coming out with a new X3 pretty soon, so there's 2017s that they're making deals on. He found an X3 xDrive 28i that was $6,000 off the MSRP right now. I mean, that's that's a smoking deal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how about trucks? Everyone likes trucks, right? Oh, yeah. I like trucks. <laughs> John Linkoff <laughs> likes trucks. Um, so Mel found a 2017 Ford F-150 EcoBoost with a 2.7 liter V6 four-wheel drive. Now, they're coming out with a 2018 that's right. a little different, right? It's got... Uh, well, they've gone from a 6-speed to a 10-speed automatic. 10-speed automatic. Yeah. Talking about 10-speeds automatic. So right. they, they just a little, 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 little different front-end styling. Yeah. <laughs> so you can get a 2017 if you don't care about that. Uh, tried and true 2017 uh, with... Um, it was a $45,000 truck. It's on sale for $35,000. So you're saving $10,000 off this truck. And it's even better if you want a Chevy Silverado. Apparently, there's a lot of them hanging out on the dealer lots right now, the 1500s. And oh, he found one that was low as much as $13,000 off the MSRP. I mean, that's just a killer deal. So yeah. last year, we bought two Silverados for tire testing. And we were going to buy used ones to save some money. We want a low mileage. We were low... We could get a used one for the same price. With a used one with maybe ten thousand miles on it, for the same price as we could get a leftover brand new one. Yeah. Wow. Brand new. I think we saved. I think we saved like nine grand on both of them. Yeah, that's crazy. Each. I mean, yeah. it was unbelievable. Wow. Well, so that kind of brings us to another segment, um, which is so we've told you there's some great deals out there, but what about you know how do you how do you deal with the dealer, you know? Right. And so we actually had a viewer question about that. And this person says, uh, my brother's about to buy his first minivan. How do you get the best deals at the dealer and not be cheated? And, you know, we buy, what, 50, 60 cars a year. Mm -hmm. And what we do here is we buy them anonymously uh, because we don't want any manufacturer bias. We don't want them to tweak the cars at all. We just right. want to be like a normal person and go in and buy the car. Right. But uh, We desperately want to be like normal people. <clears throat> right, but. we do, and it's never, <laughs> <it's> never <laughs> going to happen. No. Um, so uh, one thing that people may not know is you can basically do just about everything remotely. You, you don't have to spend much time at the dealer at all. If you need to drive the car, which, you know, if you know you want a car, you could do it all remotely. But if, you know, we really still recommend going to the dealer and, and taking some test drives. Oh, so we, we yeah. have kind of like a list of three things, three suggestions. And we talked about this a little bit before. But the first one is you were saying something like, you know, if, if you're going to go to the dealership and do some test drives to figure out which car you actually want to buy, mm -hmm. you want to make sure that you're not, there's no way you're going to get locked into possibly buying a car, right? So your suggestion was 
bring nothing more than your driver's license? Isn't that what you said the other day? I think day? this was actually Dave's suggestion. <laughs> okay, blame it on producer the man, Dave. The man behind the, the camera. But yeah, what we talked about was you want to separate the purchasing and the shopping. And because the purchasing and figure out that the, all that stuff you can do remotely. You could do over the phone. You could look at the online inventory. But unlike us, you know, we go and we're like, we're going to buy an 18 Accord. You may not know if you're going to buy an 18 Accord. Right. You want to drive the car. And I get that. Right. But to get to that point, make it clear when you walk into a dealership, you're not here to make a deal. You're here to just evaluate and look at the car. And But, but the problem is once you do that, they're going to be on your case. I mean, mm-hmm. they're going to be like, well, we, just today we're going to make a special deal. And just promise yourself and promise them. And, and Dave actually has really good suggestions. Walk in there. Have your license. Do not bring any, no credit card. Don't no bring checkbook, your credit card. No checkbook. And, and no nothing. That way you can't even possibly put a down payment down on a car. You know, right. There's nothing they can do. Right. And so, so, I mean, so that's one suggestion. You know, once you've done your test drives, if you need to, which you really should, uh, now you're to the point where you can do it all remotely. You know, mm-hmm. uh, you can do it via uh, email. You can do it. You can call a person. You can text the guy uh, or girl, uh, however you want to do it. And you can do all your, all, you can, you know, choose your color. You can choose your, your trim. You can choose what option packages you want. And you can be all set to go with all this stuff. And once you contact, you you know, then look at dealer inventory, figure out which dealers you want to deal with, and then just start emailing those dealers. And now you can even do your haggling, uh, you know, you via email or whatever. You can do and, it all like that. And, and one of the beauty, the beauty of this is that, I mean, nobody wants their time wasted. Right. Right. You don't want the dealer to take waste your time. You mm-hmm. don't want to waste the dealer's time. And when you're making a deal online like that, or you're talking to someone on the phone, they've invested five minutes in you the, the salesman you're the talking salesperson about. Yeah, exactly yeah. so i mean if you go there and you're spending you know six hours with them talking about lease deals and figuring out all these things it's like okay they've invested six hours and they want to make a decent right. amount of money you off actually of you. and sometimes right. i don't know about I don't you i sometimes them. feel a little guilty i'm like oh crap i've oh, been yeah. here so long i, I kind of got to do something for this guy you know what i mean i don't <laughs> no. feel i feel guilty i don't yeah. know and they they want they want your they want your blood they want you to sign the papers that day and, and they know what they're doing yeah. they know how to make you feel that sure. way so that you should buy this car my my, fir- my number one goal is to go to the dealer once to pick it up. Right. That's Just it. the Absolutely. day of. That's it. The day of. Then That's you've it. won. Yeah. And the dealer's won, too. Right. I mean, I'll give you one one tip. And this is what I what I normally do when I actually get on the phone and, and make a deal is is this. First of all, get a pretty good idea of what the price is. Because you can find, find exactly. that stuff out. And we, we have online tools at Consumer Reports. And mm-hmm. you can see what, what the deal is paying for the car. But, but here's the deal. You got – you're buying a Honda or whatever. You got three Honda dealers that, are, that you go to. You call them up. You talk about the car. And you say, okay, what's the best price you can give me on this car? Mm-hmm. I have something in my mind. If it's not a good deal, I'm not going to I'm not gonna counter offer. I'm going to get on the phone. I'm going to call another deal. Yeah. So this is like your one choice. I'm going to call up other dealers. You're, you're on, going to get a really good price. You're going because, to because you're on the phone and you can easily hang up that phone. Right. Well, exactly. Yeah. You can yeah, hang up the phone. He can't hold right. you hostage there. He can't, right. he can't go back and forth. And once you, you've hung up the phone, it's yeah. done. And he is also, how much time has he invested? Right. Yeah. So it's yeah. like if you can make he can make yeah. 150 bucks, done. Right, that's a good tip. So before we go, we want to tell you about something new we're trying. We want to hear from you. Tell us about tips you have about how to not be taken at a dealership. So make a 30 second or less video. Uh, go to cr.org/talkingcars, upload it there, and maybe we'll use that on a future show. Um, that's going to do it for this episode. Um, if you want to learn more about the cars we talked about in this show, click on the links in the show notes below. Uh, And as always, thanks for watching. And next time, there'll be a prettier host, probably John Linkove or Jen Stockburger. See ya.